The following film was produced by Brigham Young University during the 1960s for general distribution to both church and non-church groups. Although the general principles are valid, the presentation does not represent all church areas of emphasis. How about some breakfast? I'm starving. Find something for yourself to eat, dear. I'm too busy this morning to worry about anyone's breakfast. I tried, but the refrigerator's full of posy. Oh, no, not there. Put it over by the pool. That's better. Well, save some for the reception. If you'd done your job out here this morning, you wouldn't be in this last minute, man. Daddy. Oh, hi. I can't even find an egg, and it's all your fault. I'll get your breakfast, Daddy. I need the practice. Well, that'll be something on a day like this. Now, let's see what I can find. Here they are, right where they belong. Oh. I heard Mother. She's quite upset about the trellis, but, but it's my wedding and I'm not upset. The trouble is, your mother's always been disappointed she didn't marry a handyman. I've made a good enough living. But I never seem to be able to fix anything around here. Your mother's never forgiven me for not being the combination carpenter, plumber, gardener she thought I was. But I'm sure mother loves you very much, Daddy. She loves me. But there's always been a big gap of understanding between us, even after all these years. Something old, something new. A few hours from now, I'll have a new name. Mrs. Thomas Lawrence Bird. Oh, Tom, we'll be so happy. I won't expect you to be anything but your own sweet self. We'll share every thought. We'll sit by the fire and maybe you'll read poetry. Dinner by candlelight. We'll take long walks and you'll tell me I'm beautiful. Hi. Oh, no. You're not supposed to see me. I'm probably afraid you'll change your mind. Not a chance. Oh, boy, food. Fix breakfast, honey, while I turn into a bride. Finish scrambling the eggs there. If Daddy doesn't get fed soon, he gets ugly. And everyone says I take after her. Uh, fix a couple for yourself, Tom. Thanks, I will. None of those last minute jitters for me. I know what I'm doing. It'll be a good marriage. We'll understand each other. I can picture Donna in front of the fire, darning my socks. She'll learn to broil steaks rare, just the way I like them, and make gravy without lumps. Push the basket through the supermarket without breaking the budget. You're a lucky guy, Tom. Just think, you're getting married today.
big smile as you put it in his mouth. Uh, that's it. Hold, hold, hold. <laughs> <laughs> Anything I can do, honey? I think everything's under control. Oh, you can put guest towels in the bathroom. Okay. Hey, what do you want me to do with these? I just washed them. They were hanging in the bathroom. Oh, honey. Well, what's the matter with that? They're only stockings. I know, but with Mom and Dad coming? I was going to move them before they got here. Besides, haven't they ever seen stockings? Not in my bathroom. Well, this happens to be my bathroom, too. My mother wouldn't be caught dead with underwear hanging in her bathroom. Well, my mother isn't ashamed of clean laundry. Look, I'll hang them up in your closet until they've gone. Yeah, give them to me. Well, now, listen. Well, now, give them to me. Now, look. You're being ridiculous. Who's being ridiculous? Oh, this is silly. What's the matter Please. with you? Now, look. Folks, this is... Folks are going to... Hi, Hi, folks. Come on in. Father Bird, good Hello, to see Sandra. you. Hi, Mom. Hello, Mother. <laughs> Let me go well, check on the road. Sit down, won't you? Uh, yeah, Your come on, sit down. Beautiful. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. That's real nice. That's <laughs> the oh, idea. Honey, look. <laughs> <laughs> Our first quarrel. Let's hope they always end like this. <laughs> Kind of cute, isn't it? They all are. Ah! Hey, you too. Now this one get out here where you belong. You get it now. Have there you go. Come on, Come on there Jeff. There you go. Come on, Jeff. Bedtime. Good night, boy. Good night. Fed, watered, bathed, and kissed. Good night, Tiger. Said your prayers? Yes, Daddy. Thank heaven for bedtime. Have you ever seen such incompatible lovebirds? Maybe they're both girls. That's not what the man at the pet shop told me. Toys. I don't know how kids can make such a mess. I'm so embarrassed when anyone comes. Oh, what's the use? Isn't there any more to our marriage than this? I bet he wouldn't notice if I grew a daisy on the end of my nose. The kids get more attention than I do. A peck on the cheek in the morning and one when he gets home. Maybe if I were four years old. Tom? Tom! Wee! Wee! Look at me! I'm having a wonderful time! Uh, what's the idea? I'm just a little girl and I want my daddy. Pete's sakes, Donna. Have you flipped or something? Not yet. But I think that's a wonderful idea. Now what have I done?
same old thing day after day. I need some adult conversation. I need Tom. We used to talk to each other. Of course, these days, my conversation is limited to the price of baby food or Ricky's new tooth. I'll just have to try harder. If he'd only just... Tell me what I do wrong instead of exploding like that. Let's see. Her birthday's just before Christmas. Our anniversary's in June. It can't be that. Did I tell her I enjoyed the meatloaf? I didn't make a crack about her mother. Yeah, I could have helped her pick up this mess. It's not easy cooped up all day with the children. I ought to get her out of the house once in a while. Let her talk to people. Well, you know how it is when you have four children. And mine just got over the measles. Oh, dear. <laughs> and because we don't get out very often, this is a real treat. I know just what you mean, Donna. Excuse me. That's all it took. So you see what that does? That puts us six points up. I see where Amalgamated Iron rose two points today. That was a surprise, wasn't it? I mean, when you consider how weak the stock market's been generally, and that's a new Donna. one. Uh, what do you think will be the trend for the next three months? Donna, we were talking about football. Oh. Well, why don't we dance? In a little while. Come on, honey. Look, Gail's starting to serve. Why don't you see if you can help her? All right. Nothing like an evening away from the kids to bring two people together. I guess that's supposed to be sarcastic. Why can't she come out and say what she means? So then what? Well, there we were, ahead by six points. I don't know why he brought me. I might as well have stayed home in patched overalls. Have a good time? Marvelous. I'm overwhelmed by your enthusiasm. Well, what can you expect? Take me to a party, dump me in a corner, and then I'm supposed to assure you that I've had a lovely evening. I thought you liked this crowd. Listen, I can visit with Gail and Barbara anytime I want to. Tonight, I wanted to be with you. So you're with me, and all you can do is gripe. Put yourself in my place, Tom. You'd be resentful, too. This is ridiculous. Put myself in your place. Try it sometime. Put myself in your place? Okay, I can try. Let's see. If that had been me trying to get your attention earlier tonight. Well, Tom, it's good to see you circulating again. You haven't been out in weeks. Yeah, with the boss away, it's a real hassle down at the office. This is quite a treat. Excuse me, Justin. Get out. You just mix it in. It's amazing what you can do with mixes, isn't it? Did you know that you can get a shortcake mix complete with dehydrated strawberries? I mean, all you do is soak it in water for an hour. Tom, we were talking about gardening. Oh. Well, come on, let's dance, Donna. Oh, why don't you go help Roy set up the chairs for dinner? Yes, I didn't make her feel very wanted. Maybe I should try to put myself in her place more often. Why won't she talk to me? Why won't he listen to me? And so it's true. We could live without war, crime, divorce, yes, even without preaching, if we just lived the golden rule. If we simply did unto others, and if we respected others as individual human beings, as men and women. Now look around you even in your own homes, among those whom you love the most. How often do you give love and understanding? 
What's happened to us? He makes it sound so simple. I guess it would solve a lot of problems, even ours. Donna and I, we've grown stale. Where did it start? We were so happy at first, and then just gradually we forgot how to live together, how to share. Donna's mired in house and kids, and nothing else seems to get through to her. Of course, maybe I've been the same way, wrapped in my own interests. We exclude each other. We need better communication with one another. And to practice in our daily lives those small common courtesies which will bring happiness. Now in this crowded world, man is fundamentally alone. It's possible for him to travel and to telephone great distances, even to send messages via satellites, but how often can man talk to man and be heard with understanding? Or a woman talk to man. If Tom would look at me just once and know that I exist, as me, Donna, his wife, to love and cherish. I've been shoved into the background of his life, and occasionally when he half remembers, he feels guilty and makes some apologetic little gesture like our date last night. I guess I should be grateful for small favors. Well, maybe that's not such a bad idea. If I could appreciate him for what he is instead of what I'd like him to be, I might be a lot happier. He has his problems, I guess. And maybe I'm not taking a good look at him either. Well, these churches are sincere and honest in their desire to see greater unity and cooperation between one another. <laughs> Another bowl. See, look, tell you what, I get off work today at noon. Why don't we plan something? Just take the kids on a picnic. Oh, honey, I couldn't possibly. I have a million things to do. Well, I'll do them tomorrow. Look, today's our day. I'll see you at noon and you get the picnic ready. Bye bye. Bye. Oh, dear. Oh, be quiet. Wonderful idea, if I do say so myself. Well, next time you decide to go on a picnic, give me a little more notice, please, or else make your own sandwiches. Oh, Tom, I didn't mean that. It's wonderful to have an afternoon with you. What's wrong with us? We don't have that spark anymore. Why not? Who knows? I wouldn't want to be married to anyone else. Neither would I. Then what is it? We've just sort of taken each other for granted, I guess. There's been a foul-up in our communication system. Something like that. Oh, I mean it. Trouble with most marriages is people can't or won't talk to each other. Well, I've always been willing to talk to you. I'm not talking about you and me right now. I'm talking about marriage in general. Well, you can't communicate with someone who won't listen. Or with someone who won't try to understand. Are you blaming me for that, too? Is that what I said? Why can't you hear what I say instead of what you think I say? Just conditioning, I guess. It's so seldom I have an audience with you. Well, go ahead and talk while you've got the chance.
talk. I'm listening. Well, for Pete's sakes, now what? You can't just say, okay, Donna, I'm receptive now. Turn it on, I'll listen this afternoon. It's your big opportunity. I'll be understanding for an hour. Well, I didn't mean it like that. Well, that's how you make me feel. You're giving me a slice of your valuable time. You're throwing me a crumb that's supposed to keep me from starving to death. Donna, just what do you expect of me? Just what I've learned to expect. Nothing. Why are you always so sarcastic? It makes arguing with you impossible. We shouldn't argue in the first place. We should discuss. All right, let's back up. And I promise no sarcasm. All right, tell me. What did you expect of me when we were married? Well, I thought we'd have a wonderful marriage. I saw you as sort of a Robert Browning, gentle and patient, overcoming my fears and uncertainty, and loving with the same intensity I would love. I guess I'd take after Mother. She expected my father to conform to what she wanted him to be. <sighs> I guess I just married a man after all. How about you? Did you do some daydreaming too? Well, it never occurred to me that you would have anything to do or would ever want to do anything besides provide me with every comfort. I thought I'd be the center of your life. I expected you to be a marvelous cook, efficient mother and housekeeper. And, of course, stay as young and lovely as you were the day I married you. It's funny how in marriage your realizations don't always measure up to your expectations. Mom devoted her life to Dad and his comfort. Nothing else mattered. I guess I just took it for granted that was the wife's role. Why haven't you ever told me this before? I don't know. Pride, I guess. Or hurt feelings or being embarrassed. A lot of things prevent two people from confiding in each other. You don't want to listen, for instance. Yes, I do, but you get sarcastic. Or you hide behind the sports page. And you lock yourself in the bedroom. We're two different people, Donna. We've got to learn to understand and respect the differences in each other. We've... we've got to grow up. And I guess I've got to see you as you are, not as I wanted you to be. It never occurred to me that you might have expected something impossible of me and that you might have been disappointed. I'm not disappointed. Well, you compromised. I don't think I could stand living with a perfect wife. I couldn't bear a Robert Browning. A husband is a lot more useful. What is my purpose? In your life, I mean. Well, practically speaking, you pay the bills and carry out the garbage and shovel the snow. But more important, you provide love and security. I think of all those little intimate family moments. The look we give each other when Tommy says his prayers or Jeff learns a new word. Without you, none of those things would seem quite so wonderful. I know what you mean. Uh-oh, back to Earth. Master's voice. Come on, children. It's time to go home now. Come on. Tom, you have a vegetable for the baby, will you please? Mm-hmm. Hi, Jeff. Did you have a good nap out in the car? No, why not? Hey, your boots on tight. Tom, I asked you to heat up a vegetable for the baby. Well, Sidetracked. I'll do it in a minute. Oh, never mind. It's easier to do it myself. A lot of good all that communicating does. We both fall back into the same old pattern. Understanding ought to be a minute by minute affair, not something you save up for an afternoon off. Well, Donna, you just undid all that understanding you were building out there today. <laughs> Explain. I want to apologize. Oh, honey. Tom, let's not lose each other all the time. Lose each other? We're just beginning to find each other. Look, Mother and Daddy, the birds are loving each other. Well.